we are back with our third session and we are going to be looking at topic 290 and we will be looking at psalms 51 which deals with sin and forgiveness so as we go live as i see some coming live let's start with the prayer father we thank you we bless you for this time holy spirit you are welcome come and teach us come and have your way come and bring revelation holy spirit and come and give us this heart that we are going to be talking about we pray and ask in the name of our lord jesus christ and everyone said amen and amen we are going to be looking at this very very awesome should i say very well known psalms 51 but it is one of those psalms that really 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 go deep and here we are really going to be looking at the heart okay so we will see how as we know david is the one who wrote psalms 51 but we are going to see actually why god says that david is a man after my heart when you look at this you can see in acts chapter 13 verse 22 you know what is so amazing david is being referred to as a man after god's heart also in acts chapter 13 verse 22 now let's look here and see and when he had removed him he raised up for them david as king to whom also he gave testimony and said i have found david the son of jesse a man after my own heart who will do all my will now for us when we hear the word a man after god's heart i think what comes into our mind is that this man is perfect you know <laughs> and one thing that i want to bring to your attention is psalms 51 is really david showing off that he is a man after god's heart he is not perfect as a human being as we all are not except christ okay except christ who walked on this earth but did not sin but david when you look at psalms 51 you see something very profound david as we see the chapters before we look at david sinning David did not just fall in a small kind of a sin. So when you look at the background of this specific uh, chapter 51, we can see David falling in adultery. Of course, you remember with Bathsheba and he did not end there. He went further after falling into adultery. Unfortunately, he ended up murdering Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba, as you can see in 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 2 Samuel chapter 12 we can see here the consequences that come after david's life of sin but what i want us to pull out when we look at psalms 51 as the prophet comes to david and you know what reprimands david david is a king and david is able to fall down to the face of god and we can see psalms 51 showing us the heart of david showing us a heart of repentance showing us the relationship that david has with his father now this is the old testament but what is so amazing is to see the relationship that david has with the father and that is with god and you know it is also so awesome to see our loving father merciful god you know still receiving the heart of david now when we see this scripture that says in acts that he is and he was called the man after the heart of god i assure you david was a man after the heart of god yes he did sin but when he sinned look at chapter 51 and let's go through it and let's break down and see how david really pours out his heart before the lord but one thing i want you to know is look at how david breaks before the lord and how contrite and how honest david lays his heart before god david is not proudful david does not choose to run away david does not choose to say you know what i don't care he doesn't look away but he lays bare his heart before god in psalms 51 no for me this is one of my favorite psalms and i know all of us have those favorite psalms but for me psalms 51 is one of my favorite psalms if not my favorite psalms and this is something that we are going to be looking at now a little bit of pointers 
<clears throat> that we are going to just quickly look around a bit of pointers around sin, you know, and when we look at how sin was handled. But let's look at the pointers around sin. Number one, you cannot hide sin as a child of God. Do not dare hide sin. Don't hide it because it will come out in the open, you know, and it will eat you slowly and slowly. Now, when we see Numbers chapter 32 and verse 23, but if you do, you do not do so, then take note, you have sinned against the Lord. Be sure your sin will be found out. Don't ever think that even those things that you are doing in the, in the secret can be hidden from God. Let me tell you something. Those sins, those things that you do that are hidden and you think that no one can come to know, God knows them. And let me tell you something, they will come out in the light. It is so important for you to understand immediately you fall short. Immediately you sin as we all do. Run to God. You know, run to God. Or better, if you have someone you can confide in to pray with you, then say it. Tell someone to stand with you and to pray with you for someone that you can confide in. But let me tell you something. You cannot hide sin. It is going to come out and it's going to be the worst thing ever. It comes out with so much shame when it really comes out, when it has been hidden. Another pointer that we can look at, there is power of sin and it um, the power of sin is in its secrecy. The power of sin is in its secrecy, Psalms chapter 28, verse 13. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whosoever confesses, forsakes them, will have mercy. Now watch this. You confess, okay? And then you don't just confess. You also forsake your sin. You receive mercy, okay? You don't keep on doing that same thing. You confess it and you also turn away from this sin and that is what they call repentance now sometimes it might need you to confess not only to god but maybe to a leader or to someone that you can confide in who is a strong christian who can either walk with you but you need to be accountable to someone every child of god apart from you being accountable to god you need to be accountable to someone okay either a spiritual leader, but you must have someone that you are accountable to so that in that person you can bring out any struggles that you are having personally. You know, so many times we fall in these kind of traps because we want to hide things. We don't want people to see that we are struggling with ABCD. But let me tell you something. It is, the, it is a, a lie of the enemy. So many people are struggling with a lot of things. But what is important is don't keep sin as secret go and bring it out in the open it loses its power when you bring out in the or you bring it out in the open and you know what also if you have brought it out to someone who is a mature in the spirit believe me unless they have a problem they are going to really understand and they are going to work with you and what is also amazing you are also going to have accountability if you are struggling with a certain thing, maybe it's pornography, whatever it is, bring it out. Go to a leader, go to someone and tell them that you are struggling with this specific thing. Let them pray with you, but also let them keep you accountable. And it is very important as child of uh, children of God that we bring out these things. You know, so many times we have seen, and it is very sad, we have seen men, powerful men and women of God. You know, the whole world exposing a sin that was not just done once, but something that a man or a woman of God has been hiding has been hiding and has been hiding and eventually you know what when it comes out so many people are not just hurt but let me tell you something souls are hindered into the kingdom of god even some people fall away from their faith or become discouraged from their faith but all this starts from a man and a woman of god not walking in the open we have as children of god to learn to walk in the open you have to have someone that you can confide in you 
have to have someone that you can tell something. If you are struggling in simple things as your prayer life, are you talking to someone? Are you telling someone, I'm struggling with unforgiveness? I'm struggling with this area apart from all these other things. Sometimes we look at some sins of being small than others being big. But I want to say to you, bring everything in the open quickly. Quickly expose the enemy expose him every single time bring things in the open now for me what is amazing is um, my, my husband so when you have a spouse and he's your friend it is easier also it is easier for me to tell him some of the thoughts that i believe are not right and i just say them quickly the reason why i say them quickly so that they don't build up you know, so I always immediately tell him that, you know, I've, I've just been thinking this thing, but I know it's so evil. Can you pray with me? You know, it helps so that you don't sit on it and it, it turns out from being a hand hill to being a mountain. And now it turns into something very big. So we have to deal with these things immediately. Now, if you look at the life of you, look at this specific uh, pattern that we are looking at, which is David. David, it started from very small things. David was standing up his balcony and saw uh, Bathsheba bathing. Okay, <laughs> do you see that? It starts like that. It moved, you know, it went from there and it went. You know, I asked myself, where was the wife? <laughs> where was David's wife as all this was happening? <laughs> because one thing that I would have quickly done is to go to my husband and be like, really? Why is someone bathing outside naked or something? I don't know. I'm just asking myself, but, but it moved from from one stage to the next stage to the next stage and that is what happens and we ought to understand that if we hold sin in secrecy it is going to hold a lot of power now another pointer around sin sin will cause you to draw back and to hide genesis chapter 3 and verse 8 and they heard the sound of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So we can see after Adam and Eve's sin, you can see here they are hiding. Now they are no longer in the open. They are hiding. You know what it means when you start hiding. When you start hiding from the presence of God. I mean, if you start hiding like that, you know what is going to happen after that. That is why I'm saying again, in the open, things must be brought up in the open. However embarrassing, however embarrassing these things are, bring them in the open, child of God. Bring them in the open. Tell someone how you are struggling with ABCD. Of course, tell the Holy Spirit, but also have someone that you can confide in, that you can tell how you are struggling. There will also be guilt and shame. And this guilt and shame will drown you. And this is coming from sin. Psalms 32 verse 5. I acknowledge my sin to you. And my iniquity I have not hidden. I will confess my translation to the Lord. And you forgive the iniquity of my sin. We have to understand guilt and shame will drown you. The guilt, the shame that you get from sin is going to eventually drown you. It is not just going to make you uh, set back or hide. You are going to drown in it. And let me tell you something, as you are drowning, the enemy is whispering all the lies. The enemy is whispering all the lies and you are eventually drowning in the lies of the enemy. It is so important that we take, you know, we take um, those pointers very important regarding sin. Because those are practical ways in which we can try to uh to to kind of prevent ourselves to get from where david found himself you know david found himself in a situation that was not so easy but this thing moved it moved and moved it was from one stage to another stage and eventually david found himself as a murderer not only an adulterer but also as a murderer because david was not able to take in consideration the steps that we have just given. So, child of God, take in consideration those steps. You remember, number one, don't hide sin. Bring it all out. 
every time bring it all out tell the lord but if possible bring it out confess okay confess sin confess it because there is power sin has power in secrecy number three make sure that you confess and you bring it out so that you don't draw back and you don't start hiding because the moment you confess and the moment you align yourself with the word of god which the word of god says you are forgiven which the word of, of god says you are cleansed you know you are not going to believe the lies of the enemy to draw back to hide or even to drown in that sin because jesus has broken jesus has broken the power of sin to drown you it has been broken by the blood of jesus it child of god it has been broken do not believe the lies of the enemy telling you you have gone so far you have gone so deep you can't recover you can't come out i want to say to you jesus christ has broken the power of sin sin is powerless if you are found in jesus christ and if you accept the forgiveness and you align yourself with the word of god and also remember what the word of god is saying here to turn away okay remember you have to confess and you have to forsake the sin. Sin no longer has power over a child of God because that power has been broken by Jesus Christ. So those are very important things that we need to take note of. So we go on and now we are going to see David carried out heavy on what he had done psalms 38 verse 4 uh, let's go on now and break down uh, psalms 51 we are going to be looking from verse 1 to verse 6 and let's see here david is confessing something very amazing after david is told here you can see david confessing he's not just saying god forgive me and all that have mercy upon me O god according to your loving kindness david is able to understand the character of god david is naming out your loving kindness david says to god have mercy on me because david knows that god is a merciful god and here david also understands that god is full of love and kindness david brings out immediately the character of god to the multitude according to the multitude of your tender masses blot out all my transgression wash me thoroughly from my iniquity cleanse me from my sin for i acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me against you you only have i sins and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak, and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in my sin my mother conceived me. Verse 6, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. We can see here that one thing without a shadow of a doubt David does not try to pass blame. He does not pass on blame. David takes the full blame. He is not saying that the other. He is not even blaming anyone. He's not even blaming Bathsheba. You know, why was she naked or something or something? I am a full king. <laughs> you know, no, David takes full accountability and does not pass on blame. Here we can see he takes responsibility for what he has done that is what we have to understand when we go before god number one we don't pass on blame number two we take full responsibility for what has been done we don't start looking for who to take responsibility why this happened you know what is so amazing and i just want to bring this as a reference kind of story you know uh when we go to uh to do counseling or bible school in the prison so i'm going to the prison and believe me i'm not in trouble because i'm not going to be specifically speaking about someone's <laughs> crime or anything like that but you know the first thing that when you sit down with um a new a new inmate okay and and you just sit down with them and you just want to talk to them and you just want to to know them or do a, a little bit of counseling with them you know it, it is so surprising that you have so many of them telling you you get those ones who are christian 
But you know what? I am going to the maximum side of the prison. So believe me, I, I have the, the bigger sentences from 15 years and above. Uh, those are the people I cancel. But you know, when you sit down with, with one and you start talking to them and you know you are listening to them, I, I get shocked. <laughs> but I can't show that I'm shocked. But I get the shock whereby one says to you, but where was God? You know, <laughs> why didn't God stop me? And, <laughs> and I sit there and I look and I say, whoa, you know, I wait for them to finish. And, you know, I take them step by step to see that they should take full accountability for what they have done so that God can come in. Now, you have others who start blaming the lawyers. You know, the lawyers were not defending me well enough. <laughs> and, you know, I get to ask, did you do the crime? Now, you don't have to lie to me. And, you know, and they, they, they are always honest <laughs> because they know you are not going to do anything. You want to, you know, just sympathize with them. But, you know, they just say, yes, I did it. But, you know, why the lawyer did not um, did not represent me well? And, and then you have, I've had a couple of them who are Christians from a Christian background. And you have them saying, where was God? You know, <laughs> and I, I sit there and I go like, whoa, <laughs> where was God? So, you know, so many times we find ourselves quickly looking for who to blame and not fully taking responsibility. Now, for me, the first thing I, I make sure when I talk to to these ladies, because I'm going to the ladies, the first thing, whether you like it or not, I'm going to take the longest time ever, but I need them to take accountability for what has been done. Okay, so that is the first thing, because that I tell them that is the first healing step accountability now when we look at david here and you know i bring scriptures and we know but when we look at david here he takes responsibility and he takes full blame you know even though he was he was with the lady but he takes full blame for what was happening and he doesn't blame anyone and that is the first thing child of god that you have to do full responsibility otherwise so many times we want to choose and say maybe if maybe why was so and so but david here takes full responsibility you want to be forgiven and you want to receive healing and cleansing you must take full responsibility just like we see david here do not make any excuses as a child of god do not make any excuses david was not saying look at me god i was just a, a king standing somewhere and this lady comes out you have to make sure you don't make any excuses before the lord take full accountability but do not make any excuses before god turns to and not away from god we can see david is turning to god he's not running away from god he realizes that where else can i go god is my only help and david runs to god turns to God at the time where maybe he would have been hiding. We saw this in Genesis chapter 3, where we saw Adam and Eve trying to hide from the presence of God. How can you hide from the presence of God? He is God. So David here doesn't turn away from God, but turns to God. You find yourself in that situation, turn quickly to God. Don't run away from God. And this has been one of the reasons to why so many actually have also backslid. So many have backslid because they feel they are so ashamed. You know what? God knows that thing that you did. You know, he, he knows it. But you know what is amazing? He loves you the same. He Okay. He loves you the same. Does he love the sin? No. But he loves you the same. And that is one thing that we have to get to understand. We have to turn to God and be sincere and honest. David understood exactly what he had done and how he had sinned. And we can see that in verse 3. You know, how he had sinned. He shows it in verse 3 where David says here, For I acknowledge my transgression. And my sin is always before me. And it's so important for us to be like that, to have that kind of a heart and character. What I love beyond anything is David has brought his bare heart. 
David has truly brought his heart bare before the Lord. David is not putting anything, any guards around his heart. David has brought his bare heart. His heart is so bare before the Lord. And that for me is something that is very profound. David is not putting guards. He's not, you know what I mean, putting shocks around his heart. He has brought his whole heart as bare as it is before the Lord. Because David acknowledges that God is the creator who knows him and who knows everything that he has done. And that is one thing we have to understand. We have to bring our hearts bare, not to hide our hearts from God, but to bring our hearts before him, break our hearts before him and release our hearts in his presence. He knows our hearts. This thing of confessing halfway and hiding some other things is not, is very, very dangerous. We have to bring our hearts bare and bring out everything before the Lord. Now, when we look from verse 7 to verse 14 here, we can see David asks God to restore him. After David has laid down everything, his sin, taken accountability, you know, and that did not make excuses, he turns to God. But also what David asks is that God should restore him. So let's read from verse 7 to verse 14. Purge me with high soap and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation. You can see how detailed David goes. But you know something so amazing here is David is asking the Lord, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Because David recognizes that it is only God who has the capacity, who has the power to create in him a clean heart. As a human being, David got to understand he cannot create that pure heart in himself except God. But you know something so also amazing here? He talks about God restoring him. And not just restoring, he talks about the joy of my salvation. So sin can take away that joy of salvation. I know this. I know this without a shadow of a doubt. Sin can take away that joy. That joy when you come in the presence of God. That joy that you have when you come like a child, innocent before the father, that sin can take that away. And you can start covering yourself when you come in the presence of God, hiding yourself and not being so open to God. So David is asking God to return to him and restore the joy of his salvation. He also asked God to give him a generous spirit. Some Bibles say, renew in me, you know, a, 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 a steadfast spirit here. But he also says a generous spirit and something very profound here. After all these things are done, David says, then after all these things are done, I will teach transgressors your ways. Sinners will be converted to you. In other words, I will not be able to serve you. I will not be able not only to come and worship him, but I will not be able to serve you. So let's look at some of these things. We can see here, not just to be forgiven. Dave, uh, David is not just asking to be forgiven, but he's asking to be cleansed in verse 7. Now, when you look at the high soap used to sprinkle blood on something to declare its ceremonial clean, you can see David here is using this specific, very important term, which was actually used to sprinkle blood on something to declare its ceremonial clean. And you can see that in Leviticus chapter 14, verse 51. David also goes ahead and asks God, restore and welcome me back into your worship as you declare me clean 
can you also bring me back to that place whereby I can worship you? David is longing to have a relationship that he had before with God. He also says, Lord, I need your presence. David priced this above all things. David priced intimacy with God as key as very, very important. When you read these verses above, you can see David pricing the intimacy and the relationship that he has with God and how much he values this relationship. And you know, when you look at this, you can see that really David had a good relationship with God. And it's so important that we get to understand that. Now, something that I wanted to highlight that I a little bit highlighted earlier is that so many times, if for example, we are serving God, or so many times we are doing something for God, we run quickly, you know, we find it um, so easily wanting to tell others, the transgressors about Jesus, wanting to teach them. When you look here, David says, transgressors, I will teach them your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. But David, if you can watch something very profound, in verse 13, David says, after all these things have been done, after you have cleansed me, after you have restored the joy of my salvation, after you have upheld my, given me a generous spirit, after you have renewed me, David says, then I will teach transgressors your ways. Our relationship with God comes number one. It is and it is the outermost importance. Our relationship with God comes as number one. Not our outside wanting to convert the sinners, the transgressors, and show them Jesus Christ when we are not having a pure relationship with God. And this is a big danger. As men and women of God, or even you are watching me right now, you are a Bible school student, maybe you are serving in a certain area in, in ministry or in church, it is so important to always keep in check your relationship with God. It comes as number one. If you have to a little bit relax from that duty that you are doing when you don't feel like you are your heart is set right with god i advise you to first set your heart right with god it is the most important thing for you as a child of god and that is how we have seen over the years ministers taking pulpits and serving and doing all these things as they are living in sin and the enemy brings this big lie you know what as long as god is using you as long as people are being blessed but you know what at the end of the day as people are getting blessed you might not make it to heaven what is the most important thing making it to heaven in your relationship with christ or showing off the most important thing is our relationship with God. We have to work on it. And that is why it is so important, child of God, as you are studying and watching me. It is so important to always keep in check. Keep in check that your relationship is right. And one of the things that are going to kill your relationship, make it weaker with God, is sin. I want to tell you, sin, when sin enters in, your heart is defiled. When sin enters in, you start to hide away from God. You start not to be, you know, open to God. And that is where it all starts. But you know what is also something that you have to understand? God will not take away the gift. God will leave the gift. And you can still serve him in power and you can still be used by God. But when your relationship is not right with God, and that is the worst, biggest danger. Because God does not take away the gift. The gift stays. Of course, the presence, the anointing, yes. The anointing, of course, the Holy Spirit is the anointing. Shifts. But the gift stays. I can be here teaching you and, you know, saying amazing things. But the most important thing is my relationship with him. Because when my relationship with him fails or dies... Everything I'm doing, it is all in vain. I'm going to repeat that. Everything I'm doing, everything else I do is all in vain. Because the first thing is your relationship with him. And that is why you have to deal with sin immediately. 
Do not play around with sin. Do not delay. Do not play around with sin as if it's a ball. <laughs> you know, because inside you, you are dying slowly as a child of God. Now, David gives us such an amazing example of this. He desired for the presence of God before anything. He stripped, he stripped himself of the kingship and anything. He was just before God as a child of God, not as a king of Israel, but as a child of God, seeking and desiring the presence of God. Now, when we look at verses 15 to verse 17, David, after that, gives praise and offers a concrete heart before the Lord. Oh, Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall, for, shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire a sacrifice. Or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and concrete heart. These, O oh God, you do not despise. We can see here that the assurance for God's forgiveness is this kind of heart. A concrete heart. A heart that is broken, a spirit that is broken, that comes before God, you know, with that broken heart. And you tell God that, you know what, God, here I am. David names out something that is very important, you know. So many times we would like to give sacrifices to God. Now, I know this was the Old Testament, but let me tell you something. Even in our times. You would want to do a sacrifice for God, you know, in substitution of your heart, <laughs> you know, of your concrete, humble heart. You want to give, you help the poor and you can do all those things. But let me tell you something. You can sacrifice everything, everything that you have. But God is after your heart. God is after you and I's heart. God, the first sacrifice we can give him is our heart. That is the altar that he desires to dwell in, to sit in. That is the altar that pleases him. It is our heart. It is our concrete, broken heart. We give it to him. Uh, we can see here David saying a broken spirit. But he also says a broken and contrite heart. A heart that is right, that is straight, that is not hiding. That is the kind of heart God wants. That is your best sacrifice you can give God. And that is the sacrifice God desires first before you think about burning your body for the for the poor. You know, all you know, all the sacrifices that you are thinking of giving, God is so interested in your heart. It knows David here shows us something very profound that God is all about our heart. Now, when we look lastly, we can see something that I want to leave behind for you. Do not hold back. Be quick. We can see here in the word of God in Psalms 119 verse 60. Again, this is David. I made haste. I did not delay to keep your commandments. Confess, child of God. Seek God. And after you have sown God, take the cleansing. Take the forgiveness. So many times <laughs> when we go before God and we ask for forgiveness, another thing we have to understand is to receive the forgiveness, not to allow condemnation from the enemy, judgment from the enemy. The moment you have confessed before God, also receive the forgiveness and enter into the rest of God. Enter into his rest. Rest in him. Enter into his rest and trust him that he will lead you into fully a place of rest. These are very important keys when we see this amazing Psalms 51. I want to encourage you as I finish now, take some time and read Psalms 51. But you know, read it prayerfully and you will see how it works on your heart. And let's share this information. Let's share it with our friends. There are so many people out there that need this message. So many out there that are drifting away from God. Let me tell you something, child of God. So many children of God look like they are fine. That they have got it together. But a lot, actually, a lot of children of God. You get very shocked when you talk to so many children of God that you think are doing very well. They are serving God and everything is well, but they have drifted. I'm talking about drifted so far to even starting to question their faith. Question their faith as they are serving God. 
starting to question even uh, Jesus and things that you thought are so simple are not that simple. So let's share these words and let's read these Psalms 51 with our families and you know what let's just allow the lord to do a work father i thank you i bless you holy spirit for the time you have given us oh god we ask you holy spirit come and minister to us minister to our hearts oh god and lord we refuse the spirit of condemnation that comes from the enemy, the condemner, the one who comes to condemn, the one who comes to judge your God. But Father, we declare, mighty Father, only your spirit that convicts us of sin, O oh God, to draw us closer to you, mighty Father. We thank you, Lord, and we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you and have a blessed week.